Prince of Persia The Sands of Time remake is almost out. <laughs> there was some contention about its quality from its reveal, to the point that it's mentioned on the game's Wikipedia page, which could be the reason Ubisoft has barely talked about it since then, or maybe why it was delayed. It could have been out by now. It was delayed again while I was writing this. Regardless, I'm hyped. I'm a huge Prince of Persia fan. Sands of Time is one of my top favorite games of all time. Having a modern, hopefully improved version that could revitalize interest in the series after over 10 years of dormancy would be a dream come true. I'm practically chomping at the bit waiting for to roll around so I can play the remake and compare every detail with the original. But yeah, we haven't had a new Prince of Persia release since the movie and its tie-in game The Forgotten Sands in 2010. That movie by the way? Stand by it, best video game movie. It's weird to think that Prince of Persia has been absent for so long because in the early 90s, Prince of Persia was everywhere. And it all started with a 1989 game for the Apple II computer, created by one Jordan Mechner. The evil vizier Jafar has his ambitions set on usurping the kingdom of Persia and marrying the princess in the process. He gives her one hour to agree or she dies. Her only hope for rescue is an unnamed street rat she'd fallen for, locked in the dungeon to keep him out of the way. If you're familiar with the story of Arabian Nights, or perhaps a movie that also took inspiration from the literature, it should be a very familiar premise. And the only other part of the story is a magic mirror the prince has no choice but to jump through, creating a shadow prince that will at several points impede progress. And drink one of your health potions. WHAT AN ASSHOLE! Technically, Prince of Persia is classified as a platformer, but don't go in thinking that it plays like your garden variety platformer. Expect it to feel like a Mario and you're never going to adjust. I've gone into this before as the reason I feel like Lester the Unlikely has the low reputation it does, something I still stand by. Movement is very regimented, walking slowly to get to the right distance to make the right jumps is a frequent occurrence, climbing up and down ledges to avoid fall damage, the levels have to be played with a careful approach and methodology. This extends to the combat. In the first stage, the prince finds a sword, which will be the only form of offense for the rest of the game. And he does not wield it with the grace of someone like Zero, even when every encounter is one-on-one. -on -one. The key to survival is playing careful and defensive with parries. Ah. And trust me, be careful, because dying means starting the stage over and doing all of that careful movement again. Ah. I'll put this simply, you own something that can play the original Prince of Persia. Wikipedia lists 21 unique official versions, and that's not counting straight ports, virtual console, unlockables, and backwards compatibility. They all have their own idiosyncrasies and differences, but for the most part are ports of the original and are meant to be accurate. The odd one out is the 2007 remake, Prince of Persia Classic, developed by Gameloft and released for mobile devices, Xbox 360, and PlayStation 3. They're primarily a mobile developer, but they do have some experience with the Prince of Persia series. They developed Prince of Persia Harem Adventures in 2002, and would later develop an iOS port of Warrior Within in 2010. Yes, Warrior Within is a shit game, but for 2010, it was a very impressive port. Anyway, Prince of Persia Classic is the version we'll be looking at. The objective of each level is the same. Find a button to open the door and go through, navigating perilous pits, spikes, and guillotines. The levels aren't straight shots from left to right, but mazes of gates and buttons that need to be traversed in a very specific way. 
I feel weird calling it a puzzle, but deducing the proper way through each level and each screen that makes them up is paramount. Or else you'll get bisected. Don't be afraid, because it will happen. And then there's the human enemies as well. Combat is a two-button affair, attack and parry. Movement in a combat stance also isn't agile enough to move out of the way. There is a certain benefit to being aggressive in these encounters, but in my experience, the safest option is to wait for the enemy to strike, parry, and outlast them until an opening presents itself. Unless you become a master of timing with every attack on every enemy, playing it safe like this is the better option, because there's lots of enemies but only one you, and unless you really go out of your way to explore and find health extension potions, they often outclass you in health. Now, the combat in Prince of Persia games has always been weak, ranging from passable to unbearable. With this very limited, grounded, one-on-one -on -one simple test of reflexes, I get the intent. When you really get into the flow of the back and forth, it can be pretty exhilarating. But I guess in an attempt to give the player a break, clashes rarely last long enough before the enemy just decides to not attack back and then it's back to waiting. Plus, I noticed this thing a lot of the time, where the two cross swords if the volley goes on. I get the idea I'm supposed to mash something to win, but it never works. Again, take your time and play it safe. Rather, I would say take your time, were it not for one more facet of the game's design. The time limit. That one hour time limit isn't just a story element, you do indeed have to reach the end of the game by the time the hour is up. And I'm no speedrunner, but in my experience, that's not a crazy overestimate of how long it'll take. So be cautious, but you need to know where you're going and not dawdle. If you try to be fast, you're only going to make things worse for yourself. Because if you die anywhere, for any reason, it's back to the beginning of the stage. You have infinite lives, but the timer keeps ticking. Mess up too early getting a bearing on some early stages, and even though you might not know it, you simply can't finish the game in time now. If you want to get a little insight into my tastes, aside from some specific, small examples to add tension to a single sequence, I've never liked time limits in any game. Especially these all-encompassing time limits that keep ticking down, so it's not like finishing one level within 10 minutes, but doing everything on one timer. Just in case anyone is wondering, I don't like Majora's Mask either, and the time limit is one of the reasons why. But it's especially aggravating here because this game is built around trial and error. You go down this path because you don't know where it leads, and it turns out to be a dead end. You see a potion on the floor, you drink it because you don't know what it does, and only then find out it's poison. An infamous example is how you beat the Shadow Prince, and... While I understand why it would take people in the 90s so long to figure that out, I'll give that one a pass because it's clever and it makes sense. What happens after that, though? Ugh. It's an old PC game, so the intent was that you take a long time figuring out how to beat a level, keep going, fail to reach the end, start over with your found knowledge, and make it a little further each time. But that's not good design, I'm sorry. Especially when the game isn't always so fair. Sometimes there are enemies placed in such a way that they're very difficult to avoid getting pushed to death from, and the way to avoid them is to gently walk onto the screen in the first place. Certain traps are difficult to see until it's too late. Several areas where the solution is leaps of faith either off the screen or up it, the latter being especially weird in this classic remake because of its pseudo-theatrical letterboxing that's too thin to be a visual style but big enough to cause trouble. The game has a solid base for being fun, it just needs smoothing out of its rougher, more aged elements. And that's exactly why I chose the remake for this review, because it does exactly that. I will admit that it's lacking on a presentation level, being primarily reused assets from Sands of Time, and while it looks nicer than a 2007 mobile game, 
I can still believe it shares DNA with a mobile game. But at least it runs at a mostly smooth 60 FPS. I noticed some drops which I'm willing to attribute to this being a 2007 multi-platform game on the PS3. I don't know if that's true, but I'll give it the benefit of the doubt. That may sound like a turnoff, but the improvements made to gameplay more than make up for it, I find. Movement is still very regimented like in the originals, but I have a far easier time moving and being precise here. More moves were added to the prince's arsenal, like a wall jump that cuts a step out of climbing to a higher ledge, and a roll that to quickly bypass obstacles. Trust me, they don't change the way the game is played, they just make things a little easier. As do small quality of life improvements, like being able to hang and drop from ledges without needing to turn around first. Sounds really minor, I know, but trust me, it makes a world of difference. But not as much difference as how much friendlier this version is. The trick buttons that would close doors are now labeled instead of being barely distinguishable from the floor. The poison potion I mentioned before is now a different color from the health potions. And the game being in 3D means it's a lot more responsive. The rotoscope sprite animation was very smooth and impressive for its day, but... How do I put it? Even if older versions did indeed run at 60fps, the button response did not feel like it. You're never going to get the perfect response you would out of something like Sonic, but the remake is far better. I swear it's just faster too. Nowhere is this more obvious than in the combat. The number of frames of wind up before enemies attack is way better, so you could react in time without watching the screen in non-blinking focus, plus having a little more leeway with how long your own blocking lasts. I don't know, maybe the skill set is just different, but I can beat the remake without worrying about dying in combat, while even the earliest fights in the earlier versions are a real gamble. But let's say you do indeed die in the remake. With traps, that's easily possible. Now comes the next big new feature. Checkpoints. Levels aren't all that long, but you may not have to start them from the beginning, saving a little more time and patience. But actually, I don't recommend using them. I recommend starting from the beginning of the level anyway. Because if you punish yourself like that, the game gives you a reprieve in turn. Time. Start the level over and time resets to where it was when you entered the level. Does this completely invalidate one of the core design elements of the original game? Yes. Does it make the game more fun? Even more yes. Yes, I know you could get the same effect on computer versions by making a save game at the start of a level and reloading that, but that's not an option on every version. Unless you want to put in a password every time you die. It does raise a question I find interesting, in that Jordan Mechner had nothing to do with this remake. How much of the original way to play should be altered in a remake without the input of the original designers, especially in a situation like this when there was only one original designer? The purism is alive in a lot of people, I know this because I've seen plenty of people outright dismiss this version. In my opinion, the intent of the adventure is alive and well, even when made easier in many ways. I respect Jordan Mechner as a creator, but Prince of Persia was made by one guy in 1989. Updating it to modern sensibilities is not a bad thing. In the same way, I respect Karateka as his first game, but yo, get that remake and do not look back. Though it's not exactly comparable since he worked on that remake. I truly do think this is a case where the remake is simply superior to the original in playability, but not everyone will feel that way. Thankfully, there's good news for you. It's way easier to get a more accurate version of the original game. You might already have it, because it was included as a bonus in the original console versions of Sands of Time, as well as in the Wii version of Forgotten Sands. And it's super quick to get it in Forgotten Sands. Just start a new game, play a tutorial, watch a cutscene, and drink a potion in the room you start in. Even if you wouldn't think to check in this waterfall, don't worry. The game came with a slip of paper that tells you the exact process. Though, I'd think twice about doing that because this version just feels bad. 
Like, this is unresponsive to a whole new level. It seriously feels like a badly configured emulator with frame skimp up to max, which it very well might be. I don't know if Ubisoft couldn't get a good emulator or if they just picked a bad version to emulate, but it's a miserable experience. It's so slow, so choppy, with all the problems inherent to these older versions on top of that, I just can't stand it. I beat the game through the remake, but I didn't even have the patience to finish the second level. Plenty of people must have been disappointed with this release, given that Ubisoft promised the SNES version but didn't deliver. People are really into the SNES version of Prince of Persia, so since I have the feeling that the problem lies with this specific implementation of the game, I gave that one a shot too as a quick sample. Just in case you're wondering, I currently own the PS3 version of Sands of Time, so I couldn't test that on Lockable. The reason the SNES version is so critically acclaimed is not just because of the redrawn assets, which do look striking and atmospheric, but the added content. There are more levels, and the old ones have added sections to flesh them out. The first level, instead of being limited to a small section of the dungeons, has a whole trek into the caves below to find the sword. To accommodate this, the time limit was extended from one hour to two. This is also the only version I'm aware of that has background music in the levels, and it's good stuff. The expanded levels would be great if it weren't for the slower speed and lack of checkpoints. Seriously, finishing just one level drained me, it took so long. I'm sure I'd be on board if this was the version remade, at least as a bonus mode, to experience this fuller game with all the modern touch-ups, but as is, sometimes things are just too old. That matter of to what degree you can adapt to an old game raises the question, is the original Prince of Persia even worth playing today? I mean, I've made it my goal to play every Prince of Persia, but for you? No matter what, you have to be able to accept how this game is meant to be played. It's meant to be slower, more precise, it has a steeper learning curve. If you can take all that and more, the Super Nintendo version is the biggest package. Unless you want to go hard on the purism and pick an original computer version. But if you have your limits like me, Prince of Persia Classic is the alternative for you. The mobile versions are long gone and the PS3 release is locked to the PS3, but the Xbox version is backwards compatible, so if you've got a 360, Xbox One, or Series X, you're good to go. The Sands of Time remake, whenever that comes out, has promised to include the original Prince of Persia as an unlockable again, which is good because Ubisoft hasn't tried to sell us that game since 2012. Now, First thing, as soon as I get the game, you can bet your ass I'll be testing to see if you unlock it the same way you did in the original, because I'm here to check authenticity. But second, I wonder what version they'll be using. In a perfect world, they'd be taking inspiration from the Xbox version of Sands of Time and also including Prince of Persia 2 as an unlockable. It's actually one of the two games in the series I don't currently own. But, to who am I kidding, I am gonna buy the remake day one. Classic Prince of Persia is a classic, but... Yeah, if you want to get into Prince of Persia, Sands of Time is just a better game. You can buy that one now, actually, and ensure you get to play it before the heat death of the universe. <laughs>